Good morning. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and we celebrate what's known as Good Shepherd Sunday as we remember Jesus' teachings from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. It's my prayer that you'll encounter Christ in this time of worship and that you will hear the voice of the one we call the Good Shepherd. Let's go to God together in prayer. Lord God, we are standing at the gate, but not sure about our journey. But you have called our names, and in your voice we hear such love and confidence. Lord, bring us safely on the journey and strengthen us that we may serve you in all that we do. Pour your spirit upon us in this time of worship, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer for illumination, and you'll see the words on your screen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Hear this reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was trying to say to them. So again, he said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here in John 10, Jesus is once again trying to help his disciples to understand who he is and what God is up to through him. Uh, and he tells them this. He says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And this shepherd imagery is some of the most well-known and really popular in all of the scriptures. But just a few verses before this statement, Jesus says something else about sheep and shepherds. He tells his disciples, sheep know the voice of their shepherd and they follow it. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Voices, voices, the many voices that we listen to and the one that we should listen to. So I don't know about you, but I often find all of the different voices in our world uh, to be overwhelming. Uh, there are all the voices that tell me that I should be very concerned about everything that's going on in Washington, D.C., that this is what I should spend all of my time thinking and worrying about. Uh, then there are the voices that tell me I should be worried about the decisions being made at the Capitol or at the mayor's office or at the governor's mansion, and, and that that should be my sole obsession. Uh, there are the voices that tell me I should be very concerned about public health, but then there are the voices who say, no, I should be more concerned about the economy. Uh, there are voices that tell me I should wear a mask when I go out, and there are voices that tell me I shouldn't wear a mask. Uh, there's the voice of Madison Avenue telling me that I should spend and shop and enjoy, but then there's a voice of Wall Street telling me, no, I should scrimp and save and invest. Uh, 
Just yesterday, there was a flyover here in Baton Rouge, and there were uh, two B-52 bombers, and I think they were F-14s. I'm not a plane person, but uh, and uh, they flew over Baton Rouge in honor of our medical workers and other frontline workers. And uh, the kids and I thought, hey, this is a great opportunity to get out of the house. And so we got out and we drove down near Tiger Stadium and watched the planes, and I made a little video of it. And we really had a good time. It was nice to get out of the house. We saw some of our neighbors from a distance, but it was a nice moment. And uh, it wasn't until later in the day that I found out that there were people who were very critical of these flyovers because of how much money that they, I mean, it's just, it's crazy making sometimes, right? Which voice do we listen to? Uh, sometimes I think I'm gonna lose my mind. So in 2016, I had the opportunity to uh, travel to the Holy Land, and this is a trip that was sponsored by the Masons, and I'm still very grateful for that opportunity. Uh, but one of the things you can still see in the Holy Land is Bedouin shepherds tending their flocks. And in the evening, when they bring their flocks in, often around dusk, all of those flocks and shepherds will stop at the same water hole. And all of the flocks kind of mix up with one another. So you have eight, nine different flocks kind of pulling in there, uh, kind of this little collection of sheep all getting a last minute drink before they, they head home. But the shepherds don't seem worried at all that all the sheep are kind of mixed in together into one giant kind of flock. Uh, because when the time comes for the shepherd to go home, all he has to do is let out a, a little trick of his voice or the right call or the right whistle and all of the sheep that know that shepherd's voice come out of that flock and they go home with the shepherd right they know the shepherd that they belong to they know that shepherd's voice and it's the only one that they'll follow if you think about it the same bond exists between parents and children uh, an infant's eyes light up when they hear their mother's voice, watch for it. Uh, and parents can pick out the laughter or the cries of their children out of a crowd, just like that. I mean, you know, you know which voice is your child's voice. And Jesus tells his disciples, he tells us, that we can know his voice like that. Out of all the noise, out of all the confusion, out of all the anxiety, we can pick out his voice. But how, how, how can we distinguish between God's voice and all of the other voices that are swirling around us? So I don't know if you caught it, uh, but Jesus does make reference to these other voices in the world. Uh, he says this, he says there are thieves and there are bandits out there. And these thieves and these bandits do what thieves and bandits do, they kill. They steal and they destroy. But Jesus says that he came that we might have life and have it abundantly. So I gotta tell you, when thinking about the kind of life that God calls us to, the kind of life that God created us for, I often find myself turning to the fruit of the spirit that Paul talks about in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. These are the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I think one way that we can discern the difference between Jesus's voice and the voice of these thieves and bandits is this. Uh, is the voice we're listening to leading us to a life that's marked by the fruit of the Spirit? Uh, is the voice we're listening to leading us to a life of love and joy and peace and patience? Uh, or is it leading us to something else? Uh, I don't know who wrote it, but I came across a list a few months ago that I found helpful in distinguishing God's voice from all of the others. And uh, the list says this, God's voice stills us. Other voices rush us. God's voice leads us. Other voices push us. God's voice reassures us. Other voices frighten us. God's voice enlightens us. Other voices confuse us. God's voice encourages us. Other voices discourage. God's voice comforts us. Other voices worry us. God's voice calms us. 
Other voices obsess us. God's voice convicts us. Other voices condemn us. Now listen, that's not to say that God doesn't sometimes have difficult things to say to us. God does. It also doesn't mean sometimes God calls us to do hard things, to difficult things, or to sacrifice things. God does. Uh, but God's voice always leads us to the abundant life that Jesus talks about. So I shared this week in my e-newsletter to our congregation that I kind of hit a bit of an emotional wall last week. I don't, I don't know what it was. Uh, I was irritable. I wasn't very motivated. Uh, I really didn't want to talk to anyone. Uh, Tasha said I had a bad dream and was talking in my sleep one night, which I hardly ever do. Uh, others have told me that they've experienced similar things. There's just a lot of anxiety floating around right now. Uh, we're surrounded by sickness and even death. We're processing a lot. We're having to make a lot of hard decisions for ourselves, for our families, for others. I gotta tell you, like many of you, I'm missing one of my most favorite things in the world, gathering together with the people of God for worship. I mean, this is good what we're doing now, but it's just not the same as coming together in, as the body of Christ. One of my favorite quotes is by a man named uh, Viktor Frankl. Uh, he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning, and the, the quote is this, an abnormal reaction to an abnormal situation is normal. Um, so what I want you to know is, if you're feeling a little crazy right now, you're completely normal. Or, a less philosophical version of the same idea is this. It's okay if you fall apart sometimes. Tacos fall apart, and we still love them. So in the midst of my crazy, uh, something Jesus said began to call to my heart. It was the great commandment. Do you know that one? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. I can't tell you the number of times that those words have put me back on the right track in my life. And I found myself thinking, you know what, no matter what life looks like right now, no matter how upside down it might be, uh, that commandment is still uh, the rule of my life. I still am here to love God and to love my neighbor and love myself. And that just gave me some real clarity and, and, and made me think, you know what, that's why I'm here and uh, nothing can stop that unless I let it. He calls his own, Jesus says, and they follow him because they know his voice. Uh, and I thank God for that voice. So knowing that many people are struggling right now, I thought, I'd do something simple uh, this morning. I thought I'd offer us a chance to hear Jesus' voice. So listen, listen. And I hope that in these words, you'll hear what you need to hear today. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They ne neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward do you have? The righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food and thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? 
And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. But the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few that find it. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you have love for one another. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you also may be. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Listen, there are a lot of voices out there and there are thieves and there are bandits among them. Uh, they will rob you of life. Don't listen to them. Listen to and follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. You'll know it when you hear it. Amen. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the voice of Jesus. We thank you for his love. We thank you that he is the Good Shepherd who loves us so much that he laid his life down for us. Lord, help us out of all the confusion, out of all the anxiety, out of all of those other voices to listen to the voice that leads us to life. Lord, help us to listen, help us to follow. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now hear this blessing. Go now, putting your faith in the Good Shepherd, listening at all times for his voice and loving just as he commanded. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.